new ideas in risk management for projects. And I hope you'll get something from this which is interesting and stimulating and also useful. So where are we in our view of risk management for projects at the moment? We have a number of things already in place that maybe make people think that risk management can be regarded as a profession. For example, we have risk management standards like ISO 31000 or the PMI PMBOK Guide Chapter 11 or the APM Body of Knowledge and PRAM Guide and plenty of others. And we have professional bodies like the Institute of Risk Management, uh, the Communities of Practice and Special Interest Groups in PMI and APM uh, and others. We know what risk management is, we've got the infrastructure in place in terms of great tools and procedures and books and training courses and so on. So maybe everything is sorted and risk management is working well, or maybe not. Some people see risk managers as a bunch of cowboys. What we're doing is just scaring people into giving us their money and then we'll do risk management to them and then they don't have to worry so much. Um, or maybe the advice we get from the risk people is not really very useful, you know, mind how you go, it's a, a dangerous world out there, be careful. Well, we ought to be able to do a lot better than that. In terms of risk management today, it's well established. Everybody uh, understands it, it's widely accepted. We agree what's involved in terms of the principles and the process and so on. And it's very widely practiced right across the world in pretty much every industry with all sorts of different types of projects. So is everything okay in the world of risk management for projects? Well, I'm not so sure it is. I'm not, I don't know what your experience is, but if we look at the uh, chaos data which has been monitored by the Standish Group in terms of project performance for more than 15 years, and they look at how projects are either fully succeeding, completely failed to meet any of their objectives, or challenged, which means that there's at least one of their objectives that they're not meeting, you see that really the position hasn't changed very much in the last 15 years with still only just over a third of projects succeeding and the rest either failing outright or being challenged in some important area. Well, why is that? Project risk management is supposed to help. It's supposed to drive us towards project success because projects, like the rest of life, is risky. Projects are risky in their very nature and obviously we have to do something about that and project risk management is part of the answer. But also project risk management focuses us very tightly on our objectives. The objectives are the things which are at risk and risk management is trying to understand the things that could drive us away from those objectives and help us to deal with them proactively. Being proactive is really important so that we have space to think, space to manage, space to prepare ourselves and position ourselves for the things that are coming down the track towards us. And a risk process can help us to understand and focus on the most important ones of those things that are coming towards us and really get our ducks in a row, get ourselves ready to manage the risks that we face. So risk management ought to help, but projects keep on failing. So why is that? What's wrong with risk management for projects? Why isn't it working? Why are our projects continually failing? I think one of the areas that we might need to improve is the way that we think about risk. There are other things we could look at, the tool support and the process and so on. But at heart, we have to understand what we're trying to manage. And I believe that the way that we think about risk will shape our behavior towards risk, which will determine how well we can actually manage it. And I think there might be some areas where we can improve the way we think about risk, the concepts of risk that we use in terms of understanding and shaping the project risk management approach. And actually, not just for project risk management, but that's another story. So we all know what risk means. I guess if we ask everybody to define risk, we would get a number of sort of common themes of things that are big, that we have to handle, things that are threatening, things that really could uh, wipe us out and, and make life difficult for us. But actually, I'm not so sure we all have the same understanding of risk. So what I'd like to do in this webinar is to explore some of our understanding, some of our concepts of risk, and suggest to you some ways in which we could and should expand that understanding 
expand those concepts to make sure that make sure that we're really managing the risks that matter to our projects and to our businesses. So let's start with basics. We'll move quite quickly because I'm sure this will be familiar to you. But if we ask the question, what is risk and how does it relate to uncertainty, it's fairly clear that risk is not the same as uncertainty because all risks are uncertain, but not all uncertainties are risks. So what's the difference? If these aren't two words that we can just switch over, there must be some difference between them. There's a philosophical difference to do with different types of knowledge. There's a mathematical difference to do with different types of probability generation functions. But in the world of projects, we're much more simple. We like easy answers, simple answers to these difficult questions. So here's a simple answer to the distinction between risk and uncertainty. If all risks are uncertain, but not all uncertainties are risks, then we need some kind of filter to work out which subset of the millions of uncertainties in the world, which subset do we need to record in our risk register? Which few of those millions of uncertainties do we need to write down and think about and prepare ourselves for? Well, my answer uses three simple words. I would say that risk is uncertainty that matters because there are millions of uncertainties that don't matter. For me, if it's going to rain in Kazakhstan tomorrow afternoon, I don't know, but I don't care. It's an uncertainty that doesn't matter. What I want to know is the uncertainties that could affect the things that matter to me. So what matters in our projects? What matters is defined by our objectives, our scope, our timeline, our budget, our requirements, our constraints, our regulatory co compliance, our safety needs. All of those things that are in our objectives are things that matter to our projects. And any uncertainty that could affect one of those is an uncertainty that I need to know about, prepare for, position myself about, towards, think about, prepare for. So we could start thinking around the idea that risk is uncertainty that matters because if it happened, it could affect our objectives. Now, a lot of things come out of those three words, but what I want to focus on is our concept of risk and to just use this little phrase, uncertainty that matters, to maybe expand the way that we think about it. But first of all, we ought to have a, a better definition than just uncertainty that matters. Risk needs to have in its definition something to do with uncertainty and also something to do with objectives because those are the things that matter. The ISO 31000 standard rather neatly just uses five words to define risk. It says risk is effect of uncertainty on objectives. So it clearly connects those two concepts. If we look in other standards, we find the same sort of thing for example, with the Association for Project Management, the UK's project management professional body, their body of knowledge that was issued last year says the same kind of thing as the ISO standard, but just with a few more words. So risk is an uncertainty. It's either a specific event or a set of circumstances. If it happens, it matters, because should it occur, it will affect achievement of one or more objectives. So uncertainty that matters. Now this leads us to an interesting question. What kind of uncertainty matters in our projects? Typically, we think of uncertain future events, something that might or might not occur in the future of our project, which if it did occur, could affect achievement of our project. Is that the only kind of uncertainty that we need to think about? You might have noticed in that APM definition that it didn't just say that risk is uncertain events, that should they occur affect achievement of one or more project objectives. It said uncertain event or set of circumstances. Well, what does that mean? What, could, what other things other than events could we include in uncertainty, which isn't just uncertain events? What might set of circumstances mean for the sorts of things we should consider in managing the uncertainties that matter for our projects? Well, of course, uncertainties that matter do include uncertain future events. We might call those stochastic uncertainties, things that happen or don't happen. So for example, uh, my uh, supplier might not deliver on time. He will or he won't. 
uh, a piece of equipment that I want to use might fail or it might not. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. It's a yes, no, zero, one, plus or minus stochastic uncertainty. And so there are un events in our future, the futures of our projects, which may or may not occur. And if they affect achievement of our objectives, then they pose risks to the project. But there are other types of uncertainties that matter. We might give these smart names, like stochastic, which just means uncertain future events, uh, but really we need to think about what they mean. So here's another type of uncertainty that matters to our projects, which is not about an event that might or might not occur. This is called aleatoric uncertainty. The Latin word alia means dice. And so aleatoric uncertainty says, I'm going to do something, for example, throw a dice, it will have one of a number of results. For the dice, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. I just don't know which one. And so aleatoric uncertainty refers to things that we plan to do where we're not entirely sure of some characteristic of that thing. There is variability in it. So, for example, we're going to run a trial, but we don't know exactly how long it will take. We plan to run the trial. It is certain there's no uncertainty in the event but its duration is uncertain. So it might take three days, or five days, or eight days, or nine days. So we have variability in the duration of the trial. Or we have a productivity level for our team, and we're not quite sure whether they'll meet the productivity target. So their productivity could be a little bit less than expected, or a little bit more than expected. There will be a productivity, but it could vary. And this is different from an event in the future that may or may not occur. So aleatoric uncertainty is different from stochastic uncertainty, but it's an uncertainty that matters. Because if these things vary significantly, we could find that it affects our ability to achieve our objectives. What about epistemic uncertainty? The Greek word episteme means knowledge. So epistemic uncertainty is about things where we're not quite sure how they're going to work out in future. Maybe there might be some element of the customer's requirement that we know we have to meet, but we're not quite sure how we're going to do that. That is not an event in the future that might or might not occur. It's not something that we plan to do that has some variable aspect about it. It's something that isn't quite clear at this point. And so we might use the word ambiguity to describe this type of uncertainty. Again, it's different from the other two, but it's an uncertainty that matters. And it's the sort of uncertainty that if we get it wrong, then it might affect achievement of our objectives. And we need to be aware of it, and we need to size it and scope it and prepare for it and manage it. It poses a risk to the project. So we've got three types of uncertainty that matter, only one of which is a future event. In fact, there is a fourth type, which is rather difficult to handle. This has a, another posh name, a, a, a jargon name. We call this ontological uncertainty. What that means is the sort of uncertainty that arises from conceptual blind spots, from things that we cannot conceive, things that are outside of our experience, outside of our worldview. We might call these blind spots. We might call them not just unknown unknowns, but unknowable unknowns things that we couldn't even think of because of the way that we think. And these are quite hard to give examples of because as soon as I say one of those things, well, I've thought of it and it's not ontological anymore. Um, but there are things which are complete, completely left field, come at us from, from a complete blind spot. We weren't aware of them until they happened. These are certainly, definitely, uncertainties that matter and things that we need to take account of. Each one of these things matter in terms of performance of our projects to deliver benefits and value to deliver our objectives. And of course, if it matters, it must be managed. If it's an uncertainty that matters, then it should be managed through the risk process because risk management is about managing uncertainties that matter. So the first way that I think we need to expand our concept of risk in terms of managing risk in projects is not just to think about future uncertain events. Future uncertain events are important, but they're not the only uncertainty that matters. 
in addition to future possible events, we also have variability in planned events, ambiguity about some aspects of our project, and the blind spots where there are things out there that we can't see at this point in time. And the risk process should address all of those. There's another thing that we need to think about in terms of expanding our concept of managing risk in projects, which relates to the other part of the risk definition. So if we say that risk is uncertainty that matters, and we need to look at any uncertainty that matters, the other question we need to ask is, what about mattering? What kind of effect on our project objectives would matter? This is something that I think a lot of us are, are more familiar with, but I'll mention it anyway because a lot of people don't think like this about risk. The effect of uncertainty is assessed against our objectives, but it's not only bad things that matter. Uncertainty could hurt us, it could harm us, it could stop us achieving our objectives, but there are also uncertainties that could help us, that could assist us in achieving our objectives. There is upside risk, positive risk, helpful risk. The picture here might illustrate. The mouse is clearly in an uncertain situation and being a good risk manager mouse, he has seen some of the risks and tried to address them. So clearly the mouse has seen the trap and he doesn't want to be killed or injured and so he's prepared himself by putting his little helmet on and being very, very careful about how he approaches this uncertain situation that he has to manage. And in our projects, there are traps. There are things that could waste time, waste money, upset the customer, damage our reputation, hurt people. And clearly, we need to see those things and to prepare for them and try to avoid them or minimize them. But there is another uncertainty that the mouse is very interested in, in addition to the trap. And that's the cheese. The cheese is something that he really wants to get out of this uncertain situation, but it's not certain. He doesn't know for sure that he can do that. What he has to do is to be very, very careful and try to get the cheese out of the situation, out of the trap. And like the mouse, we have to get the cheese out of our projects. What does cheese mean in projects? Well, cheese is value. Cheese is benefits. Cheese is products and services that people want and need. And because of the nature of projects being uncertain and complex and unique and difficult and all of those things that we have in projects, it's not guaranteed that we can create value and create benefits and make things that people want. That's why we have project management. But what we have to do in project management, in managing risk in projects, is to be like the mouse in two respects. One is that we have to stop bad things happening, but the other is that we have to make good things happen. And we have to do both of those things at the same time. We have to create value while stopping things going wrong on our projects. And this is part of the role of risk management. Risk management is about seeing the things that could go wrong and stopping them, but it's also about seeing the things that could go right and making those things happen. Getting the cheese out whilst also not, not uh, triggering the trap. So both of these things matter, both traps and cheese matter, and both of them need to be managed. And what we need to do in the world of project risk management is to do those three the best possible way, and there's always a better way. So what does that say about our definition of risk? If we go back to the definition that we find from the PMI PMBOK guide in chapter 11, the risk chapter, this definition looks very similar to the ones we've seen previously from ISO 31000 or from the Association for Project Management, the APM. So PMI says that risk is an uncertain event or condition, and you'll note that it includes more than just events, so it's event or condition, but also it says it's an event or condition that if it occurs, it matters because it has an effect on objectives. But PMI has thought about cheese and traps, and thought about including that in the definition of risk that it has in the PMBOK guide. Well, of course, they didn't use the word cheese and traps, but we do have these three words in the PMI definition of risk, that risk is an uncertainty that if it occurs, has a positive or negative effect on an objective. So we now have the idea that risk is a double-sided concept. In terms of the mattering part, uncertainty that matters, 
there are things that matter in a positive sense because they help us achieve our objectives, as well as things that matter in a negative sense because they hinder us from achieving our objectives. We could use the words opportunity and threat. An opportunity is uncertain, it might never happen, but if it did happen it matters because it helps us achieve our goals. A threat is uncertain, it might never happen, but if it happens we're pleased about it, or we're, we're not pleased about it because it hinders us from achieving our goals. And in case you think that PMI has just gone crazy and done some stupid thing in its definition of risk, this idea of upside and downside risk is also included in both the ISO standard and other standards like the APM. So ISO says that risk is effect of uncertainty on objectives. With a footnote, effect is deviation from expected, positive or negative. And again, APM in its body of knowledge says the same thing. Risk includes both opportunities and threats, and both should be managed through the risk process. So here we have another expansion to our concept of risk. Uncertainty that matters is not just about future events, it includes other types of uncertainty, and it's not just about future bad things that might happen, it also includes opportunities alongside threats. Now there's one other thing that I'd like to suggest to you where we ought to be expanding our concept of managing risk in projects. And it comes about from the difference, considering the difference between risk and risks. Now you might think, now he really has lost it now, this is just singular and plural, but bear with me for a moment. If we ask the question, what is risky about your project, from the perspective of somebody outside of the project, maybe the project sponsor or the client or senior management, if they ask you the question, how risky is your project, how do you answer? This is very different from the question, what are the risks in your project? The risks of the project is not the same as the risks in the project. We can't just add up all of our risks and say, if you look at the risk register, that will tell you how risky the project is. There's some other concept here of the riskiness of the project. And we could use a term overall project risk to describe it. But what is it? It's not the same as adding up all the risks in the project. The risk of the project is not the same as the risks in the project. Now APM and PMI as the two leading project management organizations understand that and have included this idea in their definitions of risk. So the APM in its body of knowledge not only has a definition of individual risk as uncertain events or sets of circumstances which if they occur could affect achievement of objectives. There's also another concept of overall risk, which is the exposure of stakeholders to consequences of variation in outcome for the whole project, which arises from individual risks and other sources. PMI says the same in its practice standard for project risk management, that overall project risk is the effective uncertainty on the project as a whole, which is more than the sum of individual risks on the project. So this is something really interesting. It's part of the project manager's accountability to manage the overall riskiness of the project, as well as to manage the individual risks within the project. And clearly we need some approach to this to be able to manage overall project risk as part of our project risk management process. This is not just something for the program risk manager or for the enterprise risk manager, it's something for the project manager as well. My suggestion is that we need two layers of risk management for our projects, and I call these implicit and explicit risk management. Implicit risk management is the way that we structure our project. It's about the scope and the content of the project and the context of the project. The decisions about positioning the project and what's in it and how it's run are how we manage the overall riskiness of the project, and we might want to change the scope or to change the content or to change the context of our project in order to change the overall risk exposure. And then explicit risk management is the risk management process that we're used to, which deals with individual project risks. And I think there are two layers here which are quite different, which are related and communicate to each other, which have different processes, but which are both answering questions about risking projects. 
One is the individual risk management, which we deal with through our risk register and which is part of the project risk process. And one is about managing the overall riskiness of the project, which we deal with through the way that we structure and scope the project. Both of these are important and both of these need to be managed. Well, I think it's probably time to wrap up this idea of some, some new concepts. And hopefully I've expanded your thinking a little bit about what, risk, what risks are important, what risks matter in the management of risk in projects. We've seen that risk is uncertainty that matters, but it's any uncertainty, not just uncertain future events. And that if we're looking for uncertainties that matter, we ought to include the good ones alongside the bad ones. And also, we need to recognize that there's another concept, another layer of risk, higher than just the risks in the project, which are the risk of the project, which also needs to be managed. These things are all important, and we have to challenge ourselves. If we want to manage risk effectively in our projects, we need to ask ourselves, is this the way that we think about risk? Or is this something new? Are we missing something? Does my approach to managing risk in my project address this? And if not, why not? And what am I going to do about it? I think we have to recognize that risk management matters because projects matter. There's lots of areas that we could think about in terms of improving the way we do it. And what we need is people who are prepared to step outside the current, the current paradigm, the current understanding, and to do things differently. We need pioneers who are going to go where no one else has gone. We're going to ne we need rebels who are going to break the rules and, and make things happen. And my question is, are you one of these? We need lots of these people, not just one or two. We all need to be thinking about how we can do better in managing risk in our projects. Einstein said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I think what he meant to say, which is perhaps a little bit easier to understand, is that if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And we have to ask ourselves the question, in terms of managing risk in projects, is what I'm getting good enough, or do I need to do something different? And Gandhi has a very powerful quote, which doesn't just apply in the world of risk management, but which is really very challenging in this context and others. He said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. If we want to improve risk management in projects, who's going to do it? You are. You're responsible for your projects. You need to manage your risk. And risk is much more than just uncertain future events that could damage your project. I hope I've helped you to see that there are a number of wider concepts in terms of managing risk in projects, which leading organizations are currently thinking about, which leading risk specialists are working on in order to incorporate these in the way we manage risk in our projects, so that risk management still becomes a contributor to overall project and business success. I hope these ideas are useful to you. They're expanded a little bit in a book that I published a little while ago called Managing Risk in Projects. I'm not here to sell books, but if you're interested, then you can find out more about this book and other things on the Risk Doctor website. So uh, that's the end of the webinar uh, as it stands. I hope you found those ideas useful and interesting, and uh, good luck with managing risk in your project.